Hello and welcome into Shop Fix, a community joined together for the love of woodworking. In this episode, I want to show you the Craig Jig 310 series, and I was quite surprised with this model. I think it's actually much more versatile in a wood shop than I imagined in the first place, and it's great for home repairs as well. So I'm going to cover everything you need to know about the Craig Jig 310 system in this video. Let's get right into this. Shop Fix, it's for the love of woodworking. All right, so let's check out the supplies you get with the 310 system. So right off the bat, you get a classic Craig Jig pocket hole guide right here. And on the outside, it's got the nice plastic, just like the larger models. And this plastic is really sturdy and it actually holds up really well considering the wear and tear a Craig Jig may get. There is a model that has two of these pocket hole jigs and that way you can get two side by side. However, the very budget friendly model comes with a single pocket hole jig, just like this. It comes with the classic pocket hole drill bit and then the stock collar. It comes with the square tipped drill bit and this is what you use to screw in all of the screws that you use with the Craig jig. And then it comes with this handy little measuring device here and it actually measures the thickness of the lumber for you and so that's kind of handy if you're on the go you can just measure the thickness of the lumber with the little tool here and then you just simply adjust the stop collar to the measurement that you measured on this tool so that's pretty handy that it comes with that so this is a very simplified version of the Craig jig system you might be asking yourself well, maybe the larger jig would be better. Instead of buying such a budget-friendly model, maybe it'll do more. And it can do more. However, it can't replace what this Craig Jig model can, the 310, and that is to basically repair furniture that's already been assembled. If you're looking for a budget-friendly model to get really nice pocket hole joinery, well, you can't go wrong with this because it essentially does the same thing as some of the other more expensive Craig Jig models does. However, this definitely takes more do-it-yourselfness because you're gonna have to line up the jig itself. You're gonna have to make sure that you clamp it on right. And if you need more than one pocket hole, you're gonna have to measure that out and then place that on two different spots. Okay, so let's utilize the Craig Jig 310 system now to join some boards. And we're gonna be joining these two boards just like that. And so the first thing we're gonna need to do is take our measuring tool that's provided in the kit and we're gonna place that on the side of the board to measure the thickness. And I'm getting the measurement in between the one and a half mark. So we're gonna be using the one and a half mark on the stop collar. And the stop collar, it'll come like that. And then you simply slide it on the drill bit. And then you take the measuring tool, which is also an Allen key, and then you're gonna be tightening it. And there's markings on the drill bit itself. And so we have one and a half inches for our marking. And so we find that marking on the drill bit. Now, once we have the stop collar tightened onto the drill bit, then we're going to want to chuck this drill bit in a drill. So I have this cordless drill here and I'm gonna chuck it inside just like that. Tighten it real good and Oh, make sure it's uh, chucked straight. That was chucked a little bit lopsided. You always wanna check that before you drill something out. Um, you're gonna have to get it spinning and then make sure it's spinning on point. There we go. Okay. Now, we have to make one adjustment on the actual jig itself. And that's this gray tab. You can see there's a lever here and if you push the lever down, it enables you to move the gray mechanism, okay? And that's gonna be stopped at the board thickness. So you look on the other side and there's three different measurements, a half inch, three fourths, and one and a half inch. I have it set at one and a half inches because that's the board thickness. If your board was a half inch, you simply have to push down on the mechanism, push it up until the little hexagon plastic piece of the gray part goes into that hole of a half inch. So it's pretty easy 
to utilize. I'll go to one and a half inches, make sure that's secured in. And then when we put on the Craig jig itself, if we're trying to make the pocket holes over here, then we flip it around like that and put it right here. Now, we're gonna have to drill two holes out into this board to make a proper joint. So I'm gonna first put mine towards the right side and then I'm gonna move it to the other side. So we'll start it here. Now, before we do any drilling, we're going to be clamping this board down. So we'll take our clamp, we'll clamp it down to our work surface. Make sure that's good and clamped. Now, we'll take the jig itself and I'm gonna put it on there and then we need to clamp the jig as well. Now, Craig Jig, the company, makes their own clamp and it looks pretty intuitive. I have never owned that clamp. I have always utilized F-style clamps and I think F-style clamps work fine. You can probably just use the clamps in your own shop for this. The Craig Jig clamp may be really awesome. However, I've never seen the need to buy one. And so that's just something to keep in mind. I've always found the clamps that I have around my shop are sufficient enough. So we're gonna clamp this on here. Okay, so now we'll take our drill and we're gonna be feeding it through the metal part of the jig. And I recommend starting the drill once you have the drill bit set at the proper angle in the jig and then start it. So here we go. Okay, and that's all there is to it. I drilled until my stop collar reached the end of the pocket hole jig, and that's when I knew it was time to back it out. Okay, so now that we have these pocket holes drilled out properly in this piece of wood, we can go ahead and join them together. And we're gonna be joining them together with Craig jig screws, and for a one and a half inch range, you're gonna be using two and a half inch Craig jig screws and they do sell value packs like I have here, it's 250. And so we're gonna just grab two of those for joining these boards. And before we join them, we're gonna definitely need to clamp these boards down so they don't move out of place while we're screwing them in. Okay, and I'm just going to tighten that down there it looks aligned. Both boards are flush against the work surface. And now we're gonna be chucking in the square tipped drill bit. And I highly recommend chucking this into a drill and using a just a regular drill to drive in the Craig jig screw. And that's because once that hits the end of the pocket hole, you'll feel it. If you have an impact driver, what'll end up happening is it'll start doing the impacts. And then once you get to the end of the pocket hole, you won't be able to tell the difference and then you'll drive it too far and you'll ruin it. I've ruined some just by drilling it way too far because I didn't know I reached the end of the pocket hole. And so that's why I highly recommend just taking your square tipped bit that comes with the kit using the screws that Craig Jig makes and then simply Drive it in. Okay, so now we have our two boards joined together with our Craig Jig 310 series. And so let's just say that this joint becomes weakened over time. And let's say it's part of a larger piece of furniture and we don't want to disassemble it all just to make new pocket holes. And so what we can do is we can leave it just like this, however it is, and we can take our Craig Jig 310. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first measure exactly how far it needs to be by using the gray stop block there and put it on the side of the board where it would reach if this board wasn't already there. We're gonna mark that on our board, the end of the pocket hole jig. Now we can remove this measurement guide from the Craig jig 
We're going to leave that to the side. We're going to take the actual Craig jig part and we're going to match up the end of the pocket hole to the line we just made. And so basically it's the same process as before. From here, we're going to go ahead and take our clamp and clamp it on there. Okay, and then we can unclamp it. And you can see that the pocket hole is essentially in the same exact position as the other pocket holes, but we got that accomplished with this board being in the way. And so that's how you can repair furniture while all the boards are assembled and you need to just put this Craig jig in the middle of the board somewhere. And so you can definitely get that done. And now obviously to finish it off, we're just gonna drive a Craig jig screw right in. There we go. So for whatever reason, if one of the Craig jig joints maybe just loosens over time or the pocket hole is damaged for some reason, you can always strengthen it back up just like that. Well, I hope I covered all the things that you needed to know on how to use the Craig Jig 310 series and how to use a Craig Jig to create pocket hole joinery. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to the ShopFix channel if you haven't already. Well, I wish you the best of luck with your future woodworking projects. Take care.